Hey YouTube Nation, welcome back to the other 100 tiles and level 121, TNT. Now this level I really like a lot. It is a lot of fun, it's a block pushing level, but it's got a nice little idea to it. You have to destroy these bombs strategically so you can get some blocks extracted. And um, originally this level was called Dynamite um, when the set was first being built, but as some of you who are in the CC world know, Dynamite is the name of a level in CC LP1. And so I encouraged Andrew to find a new title for it, and I think he was going to call it, like, Going In or something like that. I forgot what it was. It was something in. But then he decided on a like, explosive um, kind of title, so we went for TNT instead, which I think is, is pretty cool. Um, I think the blue key is somewhere... Was I supposed to do? I think I was supposed to do that. Okay. There's a, f a few different ways you can do this, and I think there's even one extra block if you're, like, that careful. You can get one extra block. And that's nice, I always appreciate it when designers do that, but uh, there are several different ways to approach I, at least that left side, and I know the bottom right side, you can approach that one two different ways. So I, I tried experimenting with all manner of different ways to do this to optimize the level. In fact, you might be able to... actually, no, you can't. Okay. I was wondering if you could do it from the bottom there, but you, then you'd waste three blocks instead of the two that you would do with the other two solutions, so... It's cool. It's all cool. So let's just go down here and get these two chips. And then we just got the left side. I think most of it's on the left side left to do. We got those three, and then we got... I think we got some on the top, so we'll worry about that as well. And I totally wasted some time there, but who cares. Um, oh. Oops, I thought I had not gotten that one yet. Okay, that was silly. Alright. Well, let's start all over again. This is a fun level still. I, I do enjoy this one. So, how are you guys doing today? I'm doing pretty well. It's uh, It's been an interesting week. Um, I don't know quite how, how else to put it than that. I, I really don't want to get into all the details, but... Uh, yeah, it, it's been an interesting week. <laughs> it's just been one of those kinds of weeks, you know? It, it's, I'm just going to be glad to get it over with and move on, is all I can say. But, uh, it hasn't exactly been all terrible or anything, because today, the uh, new Mario Kart DLC got released, and I've been having a blast with that. Um, but still, I, I, I didn't want to get distracted by it so much that I forgot to do the video here for you guys. So, um, I mainly played it before I went to work this morning, then right after I got back. Um, I also do some work from home, too, for another job I've got, so I made sure to kind of use it as an incentive to get my other job stuff done, <laughs> which is always fun. Um, I don't know what I was trying to do with that. I did it right the first time. I don't know what I was doing there. But anyway, we've just got seven ships left. Um, the other thing I've been doing lately is I've been going through, I think I've mentioned in the past... Um, I've been going through Star Trek because I really, really want to watch all of Star Trek. That's one of my goals for this year. And I actually watched a lot of it while I was doing the playtesting for this set and for... Uh, what was the other set I was, I'm was i thinking of? Um, oh, it slipped my mind. Maybe it's a completely different game. I don't know. But anyway, I've been, I've been watching a lot of Star Trek recently. And... Um, it's been interesting just watching the evolution of that show. Um, not uh, I watched the original series um, and finished it up recently, but I've started on the Next Generation, and I, I think I talked about the original series um, last time I brought this up. But I've been going through the Next Generation, and it's been really interesting because um, it's so different. It's taken some getting used to. The characters are. They, they have potential, I'll say that. But right now, in the first season, they're very wooden. And I'm having a, a hard time relating to them. Especially Picard. I mean, I love Patrick Stewart. He is a boss. I mean, I, he's amazing. I, I, I absolutely love that guy. But Captain Picard is, like, keeping the audience right now at the same arm's length that he's keeping the entire crew at. And it's just hard to relate to him the same way I related to Kirk, you know, in the original series. And... I know it's going to get better, like, everyone talks about how it gets better, but right now, it's it's kind of hard to see it from just the way the show is going. Not to mention that some of the episodes just have some really half-baked writing, like, 
I don't know quite how else to put it other than half baked writing, but yeah, I I know it's it's gonna get better, and I really do just want to watch all of it, just so I can say I've watched all of it, and you know, at least if I ever get into a hey, bat, what's the worst Star Trek episode ever discussion with someone, at least I can bring up some stuff. Anyway, we killed everything there. This level was a fun idea, uh, where you get to just destroy all these monsters and stuff. And this one, you just have to kind of just remain down here in the button for a while until these guys all empty out. And I really want those walkers to get out of here before something happens with them. Okay, I think it's safe. We'll, we'll go in. The nice thing is that the upper area of... Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, the upper area functions nicely as a kind of um, death area for them. And did I beat my time? No, I didn't. Okay. Anyway, let's move on to Invisible Plumbing. That was a fun level. Um, this level, you kind of have to use the walls as your guide to figuring out where to go. And it's not always the most consistent as far as like where all the walls point out where a junction is. I think most of the time they point out dead ends or turns. But like not all of the intersections are labeled, which makes this a little bit tricky. And so you have to use things like that where you see a ship that's in line with you. You have to use things like that to, and I think, yeah, here we go, there's another area there. You have to use clues like that to make sure that you figure out where everything is. And I want to say, yes, more stuff here. It's a really neat concept, I, I really like it a lot. And the, the low time limit definitely makes this really uh, nerve-wracking, <laughs> especially if you're playing it for the first time. And personally, I have not played this in a long time, so I don't really remember anything about this, ex except the concept. I don't re remember the route or anything like that. Um, this just goes here. I don't think there's anything else to see in that area, so let's go here. I think usually if you see something like that, like here, I can just go here because there's nothing, like, blocking the way there. So I think if you see stuff like that, that's usually a good sign. Like here I can go up. So just things like that are pretty good indications of where you can go. And there you go. Okay, so now we just need to get those two up top and then we're home free. Yay. A neat concept overall. I really like it a lot. Although I gotta admit, in terms of... Uh, gimmick blue wall mazes from your level, Andrew. I, I, I will say, I think Just Glide Through This Level is still one of my favorites. Okay, Cross Hatching is the next one. And this was, um, this is a level where you have to be careful about where you go, because there are areas where you can't get past the monster pattern. Like, that area that's t up and to the left of me, like, I can't get through there, because there's a monster going through every other move, so that's not going to work. So yeah, you have to be really cautious in a level like this, and it's pretty tricky. It kind of reminds me of a level by, um, what's his name, the guy who did Who's Left from CCLP3. Um, I think his name was like David Knight or something. I know it was a K. Uh, his last name started with a K. But he made a level called Hamelin, which I was really disappointed did not make it into CCLP3. It was one of those levels that I thought was very well designed, where it had all these monsters in these little cross patterns. And, whoa, I did not see that coming at all. And you have to make sure that you went through this maze correctly. And the maze was, like, not very well defined. But if you could see, okay, well, that's just too saturated to go through. And eventually you figured it out. It's a really cool concept. Um, I think here it's used pretty well just because there are walls. So, you know, you can count on certain things being constants. And as long as you just watch where you're going, it's not too bad. Like, I can't go through there, so I'm just going to go back here. Um, let me go get this guy. And, like, I can't go up there, so I'm going to take the safe route and just go this way. I almost fell for that little trap there going left, but thankfully I caught myself. Okay, so going here, there we are. So, yeah, not too bad. Pretty fun level. Uh, let's see. There we go. And we're out of there. Cross hatching complete. Freeway! Oh, this is cool. It kind of reminds me of Frogger. Um, 
and it was just kind of weird because there's a level named Froggy from the original level set that was meant to be more of a Frogger reference, I think, than this. I mean, this is kind of more erratic as far as the patterns are concerned, but it still kind of has that same feel of dodging stuff. Plinko is the next one. I gotta admit, this level is not really one of my favorites. I mean, it's, it's a cool concept, but it's kind of a little bit annoying. Um, you have to get these teeth to go into these button areas, and... I, I'm not a big fan of the way it's laid out, per se. I, I think it could have been done a little bit better. Um, I do like the fact that you can get suction boots. That is pretty nice. Um, and thankfully, there is kind of a an order in which to do things that you can figure out. And if you're optimizing this, it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, I thought you had to go... You had to go here? Uh... Okay, what am I missing? Oh, you guys are in the chamber of, st of uh, stuckness there. Yeah, that's a good term for it. The chamber of stuckiness. Let's go get you over here. At the very least, though, we've got teeth for uh, when we open the toggle doors up here. Okay, I don't think... Yeah, let's do this. Okay, maybe that was a bad idea. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I I shouldn't have done that. That was that was bad. All right, so now we can go here and press this, and then free those other dudes, and those dudes can help us get in there. And do, well, okay, might as well just clone more, and then clone more to go on this side toward this button. Except that was not a good idea. Now I need to do this, where I go th through the middle and do the path that way. Very interesting layout here to this level. Alright, will that help? Yes, okay, good. Okay, so this will allow us to get the red key, and the other one will allow us to get the blue key, and then we can start cloning things on the sides, because the cloners there will need to go specifically into the buttons that are on the far right and left. And I really shouldn't have cloned two, that was... Foolhardy. I like that word. Foolhardy. Thankfully, this part of the level is extremely straightforward. You just have to do that little zigzaggy thing there. This is one of the levels that had a time limit that eventually got changed, which I'm very thankful for because originally the time limit was 50 seconds less, and it was kind of a little bit of a, a challenge to get it done blind in that amount of time. But we got it done, and we can now move on to Serpent Slayer, which is a really, really fun level. Um, so you see all these Paramecium here, they're guarding the exit, you can't bypass any of them. So we need to get something to go through there. But what could it be? Because we can't get a block through that Paramecia thing there up top. So it looks like we're going to have to get a monster. Well, we'll answer that question here in a little while, but for now let's just get all the chips and worry about that later. So we'll go this way get more Paramecia circles. This kind of reminds you of that last area from the road not taken. Except not as bad. Whoa, okay. Maybe that wasn't the wisest choice. There we go. I wanted to go on that side so it's not bothering me when I go do all that on the red key. And if I'm not mistaken, there's a red door this away. Here we go. So now we get two more keys over here, yellow and blue. And we got the yellow door there. And here we can see a teeth monster. And this side is just mirrored here. But we can't get free the teeth monster until we get all the chips. And I think you can kind of see where this is going. That's right, we're going to need to use the teeth monster to disrupt all the paramecia that are guarding what we need. Pretty crazy. It's a, it's a really fun challenge, too. And I gotta admit, as far as teeth manipulation levels are concerned, I do like levels like this that are pretty uh, loose, where you can just kind of mess around and not really worry about messing up. It is really refreshing. 
Okay, let's get you up here. So now what we'll do is we'll get him over here to the Paramecia, and he should just, there you go. Now the challenge is going to be getting him out of there such that the Paramecia don't block him, which is kind of annoying. <laughs> Thankfully he's next to one of the edges, which will help. It's just that he has a very limited time, and yes, there you go. Yeah, see, normally you'd have this little weird situation where he'd just get stuck like over and over and over again, and unless you have like a really specific monster order where you could avoid him getting stuck, it's, it's really annoying. But it's not that bad though, it doesn't affect your ability to solve the level or anything. Anyway, we got Serpent Slayer done, so let's move on to Build a Bridge Workshop 2.0. And this is the first of several levels in the set that um, have the 2.0. Well, actually, it's only two levels, but it's it's one of the f one of the levels in the set that's a, a kind of a sequel to um, a level in Pit of 100 Tiles. We've already encountered a slightly more complicated maze and stuff, but here we've got um, four corners uh, where we got ships and we got thieves on each of them. So we got to build a path that connects everything. And like right here, we've got like two spaces versus one space here, so we definitely want to do this. That's the wiser choice. Um, and of course we need to use a block here, so we might as well just go ahead and use this one. The nice thing about this level is that you get a lot of freedom uh, as far as wh what blocks go where, uh, since it's not it doesn't really matter too much. And down here, I think, yeah, this one is only approachable from that. So we need to bridge down here in order to make that work out. And that just leads up to the exit, so we really want to continue on that way. So let's do that next. And we'll get, whoops, this one. One thing I, I really like about the way the set treats sequels to levels in the original set is that the sequels kind of run with their own idea, even though they're kind of the same concept. I, I really appreciate that. It's it's a nice way to do it, and that's the only way we can approach that from. But like this, like it's it's a little bit tighter than the original Builder Bridge Workshop. I mean, you have to use all the blocks. It's not quite as um, as loose, but it it is still the same concept, and it's it works really well because of that. And we need to just keep following the trail. Quickly, follow the trail! If you guys know where that's from, then you earn five points for me. Okay, so I think we've pretty much completed that circuit, so where does this go? Does this lead to the exit? I think this leads to the... Oh, this just connects to this. This leads to the exit. Alright, so let's go ahead and begin the Great Chip Pickup. By doing this... Oh wait, that's where a block was. We need to go this way. Alrighty, and then down here. Two left. Good, good, good. It's kind of rewarding just to go through all this after you've made your circuits here. And I think you can technically just go up there, but it's slower, just because you have to use stuff down in this area. So you, you could go either way, right or up, I think. I don't, don't take my word for, on that for, for sure, but uh, I th Anyway, we're done, and we can now to hit the brakes! This is an interesting concept. You have to do that basically, like use the force floors to um, adjust when you step off. I like the idea, it's just, uh, okay, so we need to, there we go. Um, it's kind of tricky in links because you have to, you can only use corners in links, like you can't do this off of straight paths, and I'm just going to let the block go since that's pretty much the gimmick here. There we go. Um, it's a fun concept. I don't think I would vote it into a CCLP, but it is a very interesting concept. Anyway, we'll end today off by playing One Push Soko Bands, which is definitely one of my favorite levels in this set. It was kind of inspired after the level one block Soko Band from CCLP 2, 
Except here, you push the blocks only one time, and you have to use that to figure out where to go and which direction which to push them. Like for here, I, I can't go down, so I have to go right. But whatever I do, I can only go one. Uh, I can only push it one time. Each each block only goes one time. So for this one, I got two choices. Uh, eventually, I'm going to end up at that red door. And um, this bomb right here seems to lead to the red door as well, so I don't really need to destroy that one. It looks like I need to destroy the other one. Let's just make sure, though. I always mess this section up. Okay, so the red key. So the bomb goes up there. It goes down. The path. I'm just following the path. It curves up. And it goes around. Oh, wait. That's where the, the block comes from. Okay, hang on. I need to go back up to the upper left area. Here we go. So I go that way, and then I, okay, so then we, we curve around the edge there. Okay, and then we continue downward. This looks promising. And then we go around here, and then up, and then to the red key. Okay, that's what we need. So we need to go down instead of left. All right, so let's just follow this. I'm really not trying to optimize this, but you just can't help yourself sometimes, you know? I'm really bad at boosting in Tile World. Oh wait, it's this way. Alright, so here we get a nice big teleport checkboard. And a slide. So here, you pretty much just have to determine that the block exits the checkerboard up. And as such, you just have to push it up. That's pretty much it. There's nothing else that would turn it left or right here. So we just go down here. Then we move on to this little bomb maze thing. Once I get released, there we go. And that's a dead end, so we'll go this way. Clone three things. We get some skates. All right, so this is interesting. We get to see here that that the right button's being pushed and the left button's being pushed that, but the tank there needs to be nudged a little bit, so we need to push this block to the left. Kind of like excuse me from earlier in the set. Okay, so here uh, we just push this to the left, and now we can just go back. In fact, we need to go back because there's a secret hit on this level. It's level 30. So let's take care of that real quick. And we saw a hit, whoops, we saw a hit tile over here. So that's an awfully nice to get a passage back. Secret in 3, Warp IQIU. Level 50, Southwest, middle of the only 5x7 rectangle. Alright. Cool deal. And I guess we can just take this route. <sighs> really, did I just do that? Did I just do that? Wow. Okay. Let's do that again. At least we saw the hint, so we don't need to go back and do that a second time. Nor do we really need to pay attention to which direction to push the block in the ice room, either. We can just do it without having to investigate. Okay, which way was this? This ice maze is always kind of a little confusing. It's this way. Yeah. I cannot believe I just did that. That's that's going to be going on the CC Zone thread. I'm sure someone's going to post that. There's a thread on CC Zone where we put post cooks to levels when we just totally trap ourselves in a corner or do something like that. Okay, this time to be a little more careful. Thankfully, the rest of the level is a is pretty much a breeze. I mean, it's especially if you don't go back for the hint. So just press these bad boys. We go in here, do that, and then just keep going left. And then watch this. This is pretty awesome. Oh yeah, check that out. That that, that is just cool. Wait a minute. What do I? Oh, I just do that. Okay. And this is holding down this button, so you gotta be just be careful here. Don't follow it through. 
And we're done. One bo uh, one push Soko bands completed. And we will move on to Creepy Crawly next time. So until then, guys, thanks for watching. Really appreciate all your love and support. If you liked this video, be sure to hit the like button. It helps a lot. And I really do appreciate all those likes, all the comments, you know, everything you guys leave. I mean, it really helps me know that, you know, this is something you guys enjoy um, and you, that you look forward to on the channel. So until next time, guys, take care, and I will catch you on the flip side.